Well, good morning, everybody. Everybody doing good? Y'all good out there? All right, we got some sunshine today. Man, the Lord is good. Come on. Hey, I want to give honor where honor is due. Lane, you and Denise, you guys have served our church so faithfully for so many years. And Lane and Denise were my wife and I's very first life group leaders when we came to this church. And we learned a lot from them. And I really don't think we would be the leaders that we are today if it wasn't for you guys. So, yeah, love you guys. Appreciate y'all. Well, as, as he said, my name is Chuck Jeff Coates. I'm the worship and uh, the life group pastor here at our church. And uh, Pastor James is out today. In fact, Pastor Michael's out too. I think it's really cool what's happening today. It's something that's never happened before. Uh, so James is preaching in Greenbrier, at our Greenbrier New Life Church campus. And Michael is preaching in Searcy. So we got the trifecta going on, and uh, I love being a part of a church that supports one another and helps out where there's needs, and it just encourages one another. So I think it's really cool that we have the opportunity to do this on the same weekend, you know, preaching to the state of Arkansas, amen? Well, cool. So yeah, as, as also as Lane said, we're kicking off the Kings, Queens, and Prophets series today. And uh, if you didn't know already, we started our devotions this past Monday. So if you follow the New Life Church YouTube, you can follow the daily devotions that come out there. You can also go to our website. And uh, we've got a devotional guide that you can download for free, like a PDF version, or you can, uh, there's a link to an Amazon where you can get the paper version. If you like handwriting, uh, I've found that now, since I hardly ever handwrite, my hand just goes like this immediately after five seconds of writing. If I'm not signing my name, if it's more than signing my name, it's over, okay? So, skills of the old are, are disappearing, right? So anyways, we're kicking off this series today, and I'm super pumped. Listen, who in here has ever been in a fire before, like a literal fire? Anybody been in here before? Well, listen, uh, our old building across town, it's our outreach campus now, but our old building, it was kind of like the Wild West at times, because, you know, back then in those early days, we didn't have the finer things in life, I suppose you could say. Uh, in fact, our, our sanctuary subwoofers were actually car audio subs that we had in our sanctuary. And one day, one of those subs just decided, I'm just going to catch on fire. So in the middle of service, this subwoofer catches on fire. And uh, thank God, Matt Swartwood, I don't think he's in here in this service. He'll probably be in here next service. But anyways, he, he rushes over. He bear hugs that thing and runs outside with it. And service never missed a lick. It just continued to go on. And, uh, you know, old days, fun times. Uh, there was also a time, so uh, I'm not going to name any names, but somebody in our church uh, decided that we needed a big ashtray outside our church. In fact, they wrote on the side of it, NLC butts. <laughs> so, again, early days, you know, church plant, stuff like that. But anyways, I guess this thing had gotten so full outside our church that somebody had put a cigarette in it and it just, just flames, just flames going. So again, like the Wild West back at our old building. And today's, we're, we're going to talk about three guys you're probably familiar with. You've probably heard this story, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And in their story, the literal heat is on, right? And so in their, key, in their case, the heat is on because they were standing up for what was right, and uh, But some people have heat on their life because of th they're reaping what they've sown, right? So like, you ever heard the phrase, play stupid games, win stupid prizes? Well, I, I can testify to this in my own life. I can tell you that. There's been many times in my life that uh, I've reaped the consequences of really dumb decisions. And uh, this week, I had the opportunity to move my parents up. They're up here. So they're, they're full-time Hebrewinians, he Hebrewites. Hebrews, yeah, so uh, they're full-time here, and so um, I was thinking about a story growing up since they were up here. So my brother and I, when we were kids, uh, we were alone at home with our dad. I, our mom was gone somewhere during the day. I don't remember what it was, and so we're at the house, and we, we grew up in northeast Arkansas, so like uh, Mississippi Delta, it's all farm fields, and uh, my brother and I, we wanted to go outside and play. Well, it had rained like crazy, and so everything was muddy. All the fields, everything was muddy. And so my dad, you know, as gracious as he was, he says, you can go outside and play. Just do not get muddy. And so we're like, we can do that. That's not hard. 
And so we go outside and we go play, and there's a little neighborhood kid that we're playing with. Well, I don't know if maybe like one of us, it may have been me, honestly, but like stepped in a ditch that had like sinking mud that I didn't realize wasn't as stiff as I thought it was, you know. And so I step in it, and my, my shoe gets muddy, and I'm like, oh, no, Dad's going to kill us. And then I got to thinking, well, we're already muddy, <laughs> so let's just have a mud fight. And so I kid you not, we go back to the house, and we are head to toe, just completely covered in mud. And, of course, my dad sees us, and he didn't really discipline us a whole lot back in the day, but he had no choice with this because it was like, you did the exact opposite of what I told you, right? And so I got, you know, little little meeting with the leather belt that night, so that was a lot of fun. But anyways, look at, I want you to see real quick in the Word, 1 Peter 2.20. It says, of course, you get no credit for being patient if you're beaten for doing wrong. Of course, right? But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently... God is pleased with you. And so these guys right here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they have heat, but they have heat in a good way because they're standing up for God, right? And so King Nebuchadnezzar, the story goes, King Nebuchadnezzar, he uh, erects this 90 foot by 90 foot statue of himself, like ridiculous, that is massive. And he, ex he erects the statue and uh, ever so often he has these people play these instruments since the idea is everybody's supposed to stop what they're doing and they're supposed to just face the statue and worship him. Right, And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they decide, we're not doing that. But his narcissism, this king, his narcissism grew uh, so much so that he didn't only want to be king, he wanted to be a god, right? And so he didn't want people to just work for him, he wanted people to worship him. And so that's where we find ourselves here right now. And listen, I think this is happening a lot of times, even in the secular workplace nowadays. And I think you're going to have to make a decision Every day to either bow down to the, wor the world or you're going to have to say, as for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. You're going to have to stand firm in your faith. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to make this decision right now because time is of the essence. It's only going to get harder as time goes on and as Jesus comes closer to coming back and, and rescuing us, right? And so it's a question of worship. Like, am I, am I worshiping the things of the world or am I going to be like these guys, like at a young age, am I going to draw a line in the sand, and am I going to stand up for God? Amen? Okay, so let's look at chapter 3 in the book of Daniel, and we're going to see how the king responded to this, okay? Verse 19, it says, Nebuchadnezzar became so furious that his face distorted with rage. You ever seen anybody, their face distorted with rage? I think the only person that comes to my brain immediately is Robert De Niro. Like, he gets that, like, upside-down smile. He's just so furious. So picture Nebuchadnezzar as Robert De Niro is what I'm saying. So anyways, he commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. So here they are. He's got them in front of this furnace. He's going to throw them in it. And he, he heats this furnace up seven times hotter than usual. Why do you think he needs to do that? I mean, don't you think fire, doesn't fire just kill somebody? How many of you guys think that fire can, just regular fire can kill somebody, right? Okay, so he doesn't need to heat this up seven times hotter. In fact, I, I remember mom, mama cooked dinner at 350. She was good to go. But here we are at 2,500 degrees probably, a, a temperature that can melt steel, and he wants to cook these guys, right? And so he doesn't need it to be seven times hotter. Uh, he said he wanted it as hot as the middle of July in Arkansas. That's how hot he wanted, and you know that's rough, right? But listen, we just agree that a normal fire can kill a person, so why is he doing this? Well, listen, when somebody reacts like that, I want you, listen, I want you to remember this while you're at work, too. When somebody reacts like that, the more extreme your attacker, the more insecure that they are, right? And so insecure people, they tend to be over the top in their actions, Okay, they're revealing their doubts, their guilt, maybe their conviction. And when it's over the top from Satan, there's an insecurity that he has about you. That's not a bad thing. Okay, 
When you truly give your life over to Jesus, like you make him Lord, you walk in your purpose, that makes Satan shake in his boots. Okay? And so when the Bible said that like Nebuchadnezzar about his face is sore, that's the way the enemy is at you. He is madder than a hornet, right? And so just like these guys, when you have huge potential, you become a huge threat to the enemy. And so Satan, he says, I've got to turn up the heat. This person's on fire for God. I can't let God's kingdom expand. I got to let my kingdom expand. So he turns up the heat. Look at the response to this. So uh, verses 17 and 18, they said, this is how they responded. "If If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty. I feel like there's some little bit of, you know, smart aleck kind of going in there, which I'm fine with. Your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. And I want you to see something in this too, because I think we can learn a lot from these guys and their theology of suffering, like how they view suffering. There's two, th- two different ways. So as they're about to be thrown into the fire, They told the king, we know that our God is more than able to save us. And we believe that he will. We believe it. The second thing, the second side of that is even if he chooses not to, we will not bow down to you, King Nebuchadnezzar. We will still serve our God. Do you see these two parts of suffering and how they work together? So like when you're in the fire and you say, I believe that God is going to save me, that he's strong enough to save me, but even if he doesn't, I'm not going to bow down just because I'm walking through pain. Look, it doesn't matter what happens to me. It it matters what happens inside of me, right, right? how I react to that. Am I going to serve the one true God? Is that what I'm going to lean on in those those hard times? Look, I don't care how old you are or how young you are. You're going to be going through some fires in your life. I guarantee it. In fact, some of you guys, you might be in the middle of a fire right now. How many of you guys would say that probably in the last 10 years, you yourself or your family has gone through some fires? Anybody here? Yeah, keep your hands up. I want you to look around because I want you to really, truly understand you're not the only one that goes through these fires. Listen, I can relate. Yesterday was the four-year anniversary of my brother passing away from cancer. My family has seen fires. We understand, but we're going through these fires together because I want you to know that you can You can lean on people in this church. You don't have to go through the fire alone. And in this story, I I really want you to see what I mean by that, okay? So let's see what the king does, and then let's also see what God does in this. So verse 19 through 23, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Okay, so the first thing that our God will do is our God will walk through the fire with me. Write that down if you're taking notes. Our God will walk through the fire with me. And so listen, I know for me, I hope for you, that's a big relief right there, right? I'm not in this alone. Look, if you made him Lord, you don't have to do this alone. God's presence will be with you. And over again, God has promised that his presence will be with you no matter what you go through. If you'll just trust him, just lean into him through those times, right? He says, I'll be with you. And listen, I heard about a guy from one of our campuses of New Life this past week, uh, apparently this guy had, had told some of his friends that he, he just had the, the worst day that he had had in like 15 years. And so he, uh, he went through that day, I guess. He went to bed at night. He, something arose him up in the middle of the night at like 1 o'clock in the morning. He went to his living room, and he looked outside in his driveway, and there was a car parked in his driveway. 
Well, obviously, he was a little bit concerned, and so he went outside. Well, he realized it was one of his life group, guys from his life group. This guy had come and parked overnight, and he was just sitting in his car praying for this man throughout the night. That's the type of people we need in our lives. Amen? Listen, actually, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you think about it, they're only mentioned together. If you read this story, it, it never sing, singles out one of these guys. Every time it mentions them, they're together every time. And so I think of it like the Bible talks about how a three-corded uh, rope is not easily broken, right? We need people in our lives. In fact, the Bible points out, too, that, uh, that it says, Woe to the person that falls and has no one to help them get up, right? So these guys, we see them in together. And so let's watch God jump into the mix in verse 24 and 25. It says, then King Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up and we threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. And this phrase right here that he uses at the end, the son of the gods, it's really just a euphemism because it said, he, he said it looked like an angel. It, it looked like somebody that's not human, right? It looks like a divine being in there. This fourth person is not a normal person that's in there. And so he was close, right? He wasn't a son of the gods. A lot of people think he was the son of a god, right? A lot of people think that it was Jesus in the fire with these three men, and so Jesus, he says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But also God says sometimes, he says, I'm not going to take you out of it, but I am going to walk with you through it. And sometimes we get lucky. We avoid the fire. We're like, Shoo. right? That's a relief. And sometimes we're pulled from the fire like, man, I got burned a little bit, but it's not as bad as what it could have been. And then sometimes, y'all, we have to walk through the fire together. It's just inevitable. We have to do it. Let's look at what the Lord actually told Isaiah about this. In Isaiah 43, it said, when, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Do you see what he's saying? Look at this scripture right here. Look how many times it says when. It doesn't say if. It says when because it's inevitable. It's going to happen. You're going to walk through these hard times in your life. You're going to experience fires. You're going to experience storms. Y'all, about a year ago, uh, my, my youngest son, his name is Milo. He's eight now, but when he had just turned seven, uh, it was like the tornadoes had just gone through Little Rock, you know, West Little Rock area over there. And I guess Amy and I were talking about the storms, talking about the tornado that had gone through. And uh, at some point close after that, we, we drove past that place and saw the damage through there. And uh, I guess, you know, little ears were listening the whole time because he is absolutely freaked out by storms still today. It's like any hint of rain or thunder or anything like that, he really freaks out. And so he's, we've got like these Alexa things at home, you know, you can talk to and, you know, shopping lists and all that stuff like that. Well, he asks Alexa like every day what the weather's going to be. He's just so worried. I'm kind of, I keep like, well, you're going to be a weatherman when you grow up, you know, trying to make light of the situation. And uh, I talk to him, you know, I really want him to understand that storms are a normal part of this world. Like, it's not a rare thing for it to rain, right? We've been seeing a lot of rain here lately. Uh, July, we're going to be wanting it, right? But listen, it's a, it's a normal thing to see those things. And so you can't be afraid of what is guaranteed to happen. You can't be afraid of what's guaranteed to happen. You can, however, you can trust that God is going to be in the middle of it with you, though. And so the best thing is that when you're afraid, you have to remember also that you have easy access to God. Like he's not a far off, distant God that we don't have easy access to. We can relax a little bit, right? Have you guys ever been to an amusement park? Anybody in here? I've been to like Six Flags and Liberty Land. You guys remember Liberty Land in uh, Memphis? Uh, went to Universal Studios in Florida one time. 
uh, Amy and I went at the beginning of this year. We went to Universal in California. We didn't really have a whole lot of time to spend there. It was like one day. And, you know, there's a lot to see and do in, in one day. And so we kind of splurged a little bit. It's the first time we'd ever done the Fast Pass. You guys know what I'm talking about? So you get a Fast Pass, and you don't have to stand in the lines. And so here we are with, at, at this park, and uh, we've got this easy access, right? We get to go in, like, the secret lines, and so, you know, you're looking at this line that's like, it, there's a sign that says 90 minute wait. And you're like, oh gosh. Well, you start going on this secret path and you look over and you can see the line from a distance. Like a bunch of chumps. Look at y'all over there. Yeah. And so you go straight to the, the beginning and you just jump on the ride. It's the, we'll never do another amusement park without a fast pass. Highly recommend, save up a little bit more. But easy access, right? It's easy to get in there. And do that. And there is also, there's just an easy, exclusive access that you have to God because of Jesus. Because of what he did on Calvary when he died on the cross, he gave us access to the Lord, right? Gave us access to the Holy of Holies in prayer. Gave us access to his presence, to his angelic help, right? To his Holy Spirit, help and power. I mean, he's close He's as close as just the mention of his name. Just say his name, Jesus. Come on, say that. Just say his name, Jesus. He's just as close as that. You call on his name and he's right there with you. Number two, God will burn off the things tying me down. God will burn off the things tying me down. Back in verse 24 and 25, The words that were used were unbound and unharmed, like healed and whole, right? I love this. Look, God will burn off everything that's tying me down. And so if you notice in this fire, they didn't get burned. Their clothes weren't singed. uh, Their their hair wasn't burned off, their eyelashes, their eyebrows. And you ever smelled hair, burnt hair before? Listen, that's the reason why I know it's not in the Bible, because Trust me, if there was burnt hair involved, the Bible would mention it, okay? Because you, you, you can't get away from it. And so listen, I've got a couple of questions I want you to ask yourself. What's got you tied up? What's holding you back? What's limiting you from being all that you're meant to be, all that you're called to be? What are the limitations that in your life that God wants to burn off? I, I, I bet if you think about it, you can probably pinpoint those things. Are you going to, anytime you're going through a fire, like are you, are you looking for the quickest exit? Are you just trying to get out rather than letting it do its job? Listen, God, he wants to burn some things off of you today. And let me tell you the thing, the thing about pain is that pain, it never leaves you the way that it found you, Right? It's going to pick you up over here, and it's going to set you down over here. It's going to change you, right? It's, you're not going to be the same after it. Look, when you live for God in a fire, the fire, it promotes you to a new level. I know it's hard to think about it that way, but I really do believe that it promotes you to a new level. And the opposite can be true, too, because I know that you've probably seen people that have gone through, gone through fires before, and they're just a shell of themselves. They're not the same in that way. And listen, I, I'm preaching to myself Today, because, look, when I lost my brother, it's, it's changed me. I'm not the same. But I really believe that God still has plans for me. And I believe that God still has plans for you. No matter what fire you've been through in your life, God still has plans for you. Isaiah 48.10 says, I've refined you, but not in the way that silver is refined. Rather, I've refined you in the furnace of suffering. And so in those times, your character has been tested, it's been refined, it's been stretched. And because of the refining fire, your ability to witness to other people, it's changed. You now have a new ability to witness to people now that you, than before you did before then. I, I really believe that your witness is in a whole new level now. Look, anybody in here ever seen Rambo 3? Rambo 3? Yeah. It's rated R, so I've never seen it, but... I'm, t- I'm totally kidding. I've seen it. But listen, um, it's, it's really like any other, you know, war action movie. You know, when you get shot or when you lose a limb, what do you got to do? You got to cauterize the wound, right? You got you to get a little fire. You got to burn it. You know, it's going to make it better. So in Rambo 3, 
he gets shot like a like a bullet through through his side out the back you know kind of thing well the action has to continue right so he has to cauterize the wound he gets a little bit of gunpowder pours on there and he lights that sucker on fire and it cauterizes the wound so it stops the bleeding right it keeps the bleeding from happening and so a lot of you you've already walked through some fires and because those fires those wounds that you had before they've 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 cauterized right the fire has cleansed that wound and uh now maybe you look at life a little bit differently maybe now you don't have the fear that you used to have you know, maybe now you're not afraid of other people's opinions, or maybe even now you're not afraid of turning out like the person that you, everyone thought that you were going to be, right? Because of the way that you acted or reacted from those fires, those situations you were in. And listen, there's liberation in that. There's freedom in that. And listen, it's interesting. I'm not a huge uh, plant person, but I did find out there's this really cool tree. So uh, certain plants react only in extreme conditions. So like in a, a forest fire, there's this tree called the jack pine. I've got a picture. I'm going to show you guys. So this is uh, the, the limb of a jack pine tree, and these are the pine cones. And uh, in New England, these things grow. And uh, in forest fires, the, the uh, pine cone will actually open up, but only under that extreme heat. That pine cone will open up and it will bear its seeds and then new life will birth from that, that, that pine cone. And so it's so tight, it, it only has the opportunity to that in that extreme heat. And so I really believe this is true with all of us too because I think in those times where we're going through those harsh conditions, I think new life is birthed inside of us. I think there's new songs, there's new books, there's, there's ministry in you that comes alive. There are gifts in you that can come alive. And there are maybe even business opportunities that come alive. And they're often released from that area of pain. But you have to give it an opportunity to do that. You have to give God an opportunity to work through that pain in your life. And so God, he's given you a new way to reach people through that. Amen. Number three, it will bring unbelievers to God. It will bring unbelievers to God. Listen, the fire that you've been through, it's a testimony. It's a witness. It will bring unbelievers to God. Like how you handle pain, how much you trust God when you're in the pain. People are watching you more often than you realize. How much you trust God when you're in the pain. How, when you're under the pressure, how are you acting? When the heat is on in your life, what does it look like? Because I, it'll probably be the most powerful witness and the most powerful testimony that you'll have in your life. Because a faith that is tested is a faith that can be trusted. Amen? Listen, people, they don't really care about hearing about my successes in life. I don't have a ton. I've got some. But people want to know the, the dirt, right? They want to know the nitty-gritty. They want to know about the cancer, the death, the marriage troubles. They want to know about the dirt. They want to know where the cops involved, right? Was I tased? They want to know all that stuff like that because we can relate to stuff like that. Maybe not everybody can relate to being tased. <laughs> Chris Brown's in here somewhere. You got to get tased to carry one, right? So, but anyways, look at open those type of conversations. That's what opens doors to to people in their lives, right? Because you can relate to that. And so Daniel, let's see how it finishes here. Verses 28 through 30. I want you to see the king's response to this whole situation and what's happened. It says, Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him. Look at that. He is responding because of their faith in what has happened, right? So they trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or worship any other god except their own. Therefore, I decree... This is getting a little intense. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything about the God, against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. Okay, you got to give this guy some grace. He just had his experience with the one true God, right? We've all been there. When we first became Christ followers, we had to have a little bit of grace, okay? 
Look, for no other God can save in this way. Then the king promoted, look at that, see, they're promoted. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. What a testimony to the world. Isn't that awesome? Look, do you know the difference between a travel, uh, a travel agent and a tour guide? Well, listen, a travel agent, still helpful, very helpful, but they can't give you on-the-ground experience. You know, they, they may can give you some suggestions, and they may have read about the place that you're wanting to go, but they may not have been there themselves, so they can only tell you so much about a place, right? Well, a tour guide they're on the ground, right? They've been there. They know all the hot spots. When you're coming around that curve, they can tell you exactly where to look to see the best spot. Because, you know, without somebody like that, you could be looking over here and all the good stuff's back over this way. That's a tour guide, okay? And so a lot of your ministry, it will be like a travel agent. You know, you'll have somebody that you'll come in contact with and they're going through a fire and it may be a situation that you've not gone through yourself, so you're more like a travel agent. You're like, look, I, I'm so sorry you're going through that. Let's go to the Word, and let's see what God says about your situation. But then on the flip side, there are going to be times in your life, and I promise you this, there are going to be times in your life where you come across somebody that is going through a fire that you have overcome. And at that point, you're a tour guide. Because you can say, look, I've been through that fire, and I know how tough it is, and I've come out on the other side of it, and God is going to take care of you through it. Amen? And so listen, I'm going to land on this story because I want you to understand the importance of biblical relationships in your lives. Because I think it's, I think it's so important, so, so important for every single person in our church to be a part of a life group. And have those biblical relationships. My wife, Amy and I, a few years ago, we started a new life group. And um, there were two couples uh, not too long after we had started this group that were in our group that started going through a cancer battle. Uh, one of those couples, was a, it was a personal cancer battle there. But then the other couple, it was a, the kid of their best friend was going through a cancer battle. Well, let me tell you... I, I really didn't realize this until this happened, but we had multiple people in our group that had been through that battle. And so we were able to stand with them and pray with them and empathize with them because we had walked through that. We need people in our lives that are gonna be there for us in those times. We can't be walking around alone. We've got all this pain and we're bearing it on ourselves. We don't have anybody to share the load. Right? A three-braided cord is not easily broken. We need people around us. And so please, let's let this story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let's be like them and not go through these fires in life alone. Amen? Let me pray for you. If you would, just bow your heads. Well, Lord, first, I just, first and foremost, I just thank you for stories in the Bible that are not so far-fetched that we can't relate. Lord, I thank you for this story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because I know this is something we've all endured. It may not be a physical fire that's in our life, Lord, but there have been some storms and some things that we've walked through that we can look back on now and we know that you helped us walk through that. And so, Lord, we just continue to trust in that, that, you know, every time this comes our way, Lord, we're going to lean into you, we're going to lean into each other, and we're going to be thankful that you are producing something new in us. There's new life that's going to be birthed through these tough situations. Listen, if there's anybody here today that has never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to give you the opportunity to do that because the sin that you have in your life it's been paid for by Jesus. When he went on the cross, he paid for it so that you would not have to. But you have to accept that, that sacrifice in your life, and you have to make him Lord. You have to say, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to be in the driver's seat anymore. Lord, I want to put you in the driver's seat, and I just want to live for you. If that's you, if you've never surrendered your life to Christ before and you want to do that today, I want to give you that opportunity. So if you would, just raise your hand and look up at me, anybody in here. Yeah, or maybe you're in here today 
and you have strayed away from the Lord. You're like the prodigal son, and you've gone off on your own, and you started doing your own thing, and you've kind of left the Lord behind. Look, he's still there waiting for you. He's here right now, and he loves you. You may have walked away from him, but he has not walked away from you. If you want to come back to him today, and you want to put that lordship back in your life, put him back in that place in your life, raise your hand and look up at me. I want to pray for you too. Anybody in here? Yeah, well, listen, if that was you, I just want you to pray this right now. Lord, I just thank you for all that you've done for me. Lord, I thank you for Jesus dying on the cross and paying for my sin, sin that, that I could either pay for myself or I could let him pay for. And so I thank you, Lord, that he paid that for me, and I accept that, Lord. I, I make you Lord of my life today. Lord, I'm sorry if I've strayed away and gone off on my own. Lord, I just want to come back to you, Lord. We all just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.